comfortable with. And uh, yeah, so this is exciting and we're gonna leave it now with, um, oh, actually I forgot to introduce myself. Just <laughs> from the San Francisco chapter. Um, and I'm really happy that you guys are here. So now I'm gonna leave it with you uh, leave you guys with leave you all with Shannon from the Philip chapter. Thank you. Hi everyone. Thank you, Jocelyn. Um, hi everyone. My name is Shannon Morales. I am the new uh, Philly chapter director of Tecaria. We are a very new chapter, so I'm the first leader um, within Philadelphia. We are 30 members strong. We are small but mighty, um, and we're super excited to just get expand and make sure that we are supporting all Latinx and tech within our region. I am also the founder of Echo Me Forward. Echo Me Forward is a, is a virtual recruiting platform that helps um, diverse founders um, as well as professionals in tech <laughs> and innovation. It helps them land opportunities at equitable workplaces. So we make sure that the companies that we partner with are focused on D, E, and I, and are building inclusive uh, workplace and cultures. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Whitney. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are on. Um, so I will let you guys introduce yourselves as well as your company. Awesome. Yeah. So we're all here, plus our 53 participants. So shout out to y'all for making it here today with us. Uh, what's up, Lily? <laughs> so yeah, my name is Lucy. I'm one of the co-founders of WorkWell. We are a job search and interview skills accelerator. Over 75% of our clients are women and or people of color, which is super cool. Um, and I, we, Whitney and I together have helped over 900 people land jobs within tech specifically in both technical and non-technical roles at companies like Apple, Google, Facebook. Um, before starting WorkWell, I've had some tech startup experience along with working at Apple, where I led a team of 400 at their global flagship location in San Francisco. Um, and now I get to do work that, you know, continuing to build off of those layers of my career into what is now WorkWell. So I'm super excited to be here. Uh, WorkWell has had extensive experience. Even just today, we're helping someone salary negotiate. Um, so this is a, a daily uh, practice at work well within our community. There's always someone reaching out <laughs> um, uh, that are, you know, moving along and just want to really, a lot of it comes down to just like, can I hit the email? Can I ask for more? A lot of it's asking for permission. So super grateful to get to do this work and empower the community to not leave any money on the table. So thanks again for inviting us to come hang with you all today and share some love and spread some knowledge. Hi all, sorry, uh, thanks for flowing with my serious technical difficulties. Five years of using this platform and here we are still struggling. <laughs> um, so it goes. Uh, I think that's, that's part of being a human in today's world for sure. Um, in this conversation around negotiation and workplace, um, finding some flow and also <laughs> taking as much action as you can uh, with the support of your community. Um, so like Lucy said, we support a lot of salary negotiation conversations, um, and I am thrilled to get to be a part of your all journey, wherever you're at today, however you're feeling today, um, I'm with you and, um, this, this is the stuff that <laughs> gets me going every day for sure, especially for women, um, equality in the workplace, making as much money as we can, whether we're super money motivated or not, um, I realized early on that uh, it's not equal. Uh, and as much as I can be part of empowering folks to feel confident in whatever workplace conversation, including negotiation, I'm, it's what it's all about for me. So super exciting to get to be here with you all. Can't wait to learn more about you. Awesome, thank you so much, Whitney and Lucy. Um, so because I am from like New Jersey, Philly area, we all love cerveza, but today I have a special surprise for you. I am going to mix up one of my favorite cocktails that is kind of, um, honestly, I just made it up because <laughs> I absolutely love tea, but sometimes I can't sleep. So I decided to make like a 
a tea, a black, it's called like, I'm gonna call it like a spiked black tea latte. So um, here's like my shaker, it has ice in it. I already made black tea and it's cooled off and it has a little bit of cream in it, but non-dairy, because I don't like dairy. And then I'm just gonna spike it with my favorite like cream liqueur. If, have, has anyone ever had 1925, 21, sorry, it's from Mexico. And it is a cream of tequila, but since I'm saving that, cause I got it all the way from Cancun, I'm gonna use rum chata. <laughs> so I'm actually just gonna put one shot of rum chata into my shaker, mix it up. And can anyone tell I love rose gold? No. <laughs> Not even a little bit, no. You should see my whole living room, but, and then I'm gonna pour it. And literally, that is it. Literally what I'm gonna be drinking for the rest of the night. Cheers. Okay, um, so let's get started. Um, I wanna be honest and say that I wanted to have a candid discussion about salary negotiations because I think it's one of those conversations that people feel a little bit uptight about. So I felt like having a drink, whether it's a cocktail or a mocktail, will kind of put everybody at ease and let people kind of open up and ask the type of questions that they really wanna ask. Um, when I started, I started to work in finance about five years ago and five, well, actually more than that now, I don't wanna tell my age, but I was working in a male dominated industry in finance. So I was just super excited to even land a job, right? Let alone, you know, being in finance, but I was super excited just to even land the job, the interview and the opportunity. So when I had the chance and when I got the opportunity to, you know, uh, when I got the offer, I never even asked, you know, uh, hey, can I have like an additional five or an additional 10K? But I've realized over time and as I started to practice that you never take the first offer. And I know you, Whitney and Lucy, you guys can jump in, but I've heard that you never take the first offer. And now I'm a recruiter, so I definitely know that you never take the first offer. Because if you think about it, it's almost like going into, um, a car um, or car sales and saying uh, someone asking you how much do you want to pay for the car right you're not going to say oh i want to pay the top of my budget for a car um, you want to negotiate that right so it's the same thing when recruiters are trying to bring people into their company they're not going to ask to pay they're not going to pay you top dollar unless you negotiate and ask for it um, so just a little bit of a little story about me is that I came in at um, $67,000 um, for my first or first or second job. And then within two years, I was able to negotiate six figures at a completely different company. Um, and that's just me understanding what I was worth in the market, doing a lot of research on Glassdoor, understanding like how many years experience I have, as well as like the industry, and then putting myself up there with the, you know, with the best of the best. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Whitney and Lucy, and I want you guys to kind of give me your best tips and share with these ladies on how they can negotiate what they're worth. And I'm just going to sit here and listen and drink my cocktail. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for sharing your personal part of the story. I think a lot, everyone has their own experience with negotiation, whether or not you've negotiated or not. Like that's your experience is that maybe it's, you know, you've never practiced it yet. And there's really good news for you if you're one person who's never practiced it, or maybe you've tried and you haven't gotten um, an increase and that was the unique situation, which those are unique situations. Maybe if it's a really small size startup or like there are little, you know, exceptions, but we're talking about tech at large um, specifically. And so this is Techeria. So, um, so negotiation, I'll just begin by saying it's an expected part of the process, period, period. Okay, so uh, for perspective, uh, we'll start with why. Why is this so important? Um, we were at, Whitney and I were at a event at Indeed back when uh, in-person networking was a total thing and we were hopping around every week 
uh, to multiple events. Uh, Whitney knew all the good ones with all the good food, which I loved, which is definitely her skill. <laughs> um, uh, and so, yeah, indeed, a fun fact, when we do get to network in person again, they have great Middle Eastern cuisine. So I'm Egyptian, so I like gotta, gotta love my Middle Eastern cuisine. Um, so yeah, so we're there and we're um, talking to the director of hiring at the time. And she was telling us, um, it was after the event, we were connecting with her and she was saying, yeah, when people don't negotiate, it's a red flag. And I said, oh, wow, okay, like say more about this. This is huge coming from, you know, a director of hiring. Um, and she's like, yeah, it just literally shows me that this person doesn't know their worth. Um, and, um, and, and confidence is, definitely goes a long way, right, in the interview process. So um, good news is negotiation is a skill. It's a skill that can be learned, like all skills, which is, I think, um, just shining some light and hope into people who think negotiation is this, like, big, scary thing that's over there and far away and, you know, only for, like, the wolves on Wall Street or something. And I think any narrative or any type of way that you feel about negotiation, just notice it. Um, it's usually not yours. Like there's, it's a story that was told to you or that you learned from somewhere, or maybe you didn't learn anything about it and you're just like, cool, like offer, I'm gonna accept it. I should be lucky to have this job. Um, and, and yeah, I think just to, inspired by, you know, you Shannon sharing your personal story, I'll share a bit of mine and then I'll pass the mic to Whitney. Uh, when I, first got my job into tech. I was, uh, previous to that, I was working the, in the emergency room in downtown Las Vegas, which maybe we can have a tech re event just on the stories that came of that, uh, which was a good time. Uh, but yeah, so I really put myself out there um, knowing that I had a lot of skills in terms of just who I am, what I embody, um, the teamwork, the leadership, these skills that I never necessarily had the hat, but I knew that I could share specific stories and examples to translate those skills into a job. So I applied to Teach for America, um, uh, PA school at Howard University, and then also uh, Apple uh, in their one of their two-year leadership program. And within a like two and a half week time frame, I got offers from all three. And I was like, holy crap, like, what do I do, right? And so I was, um, it's so funny, like, going from job searching to now, it's like multiple offers. Ah, like, um, and then I just thought, okay, well, you know, I wrote down my pros and cons list for each. I decided to go with Apple, long story short, and I just accepted the offer, like, period. I was just like, cool. When I had two other offers on the table, and now I know, right, like the best way to negotiate an offer is to have other offers. And so at WorkWell, we teach folks how to job search effectively. So you actually do end up with multiple offers at the same time. So you don't leave money on the table and you can leverage those offers accordingly. So, um, you know, hindsight's 2020. I'm not going to shame or blame myself. And I hope that you don't either or anyone on this call because we don't know what we don't know, right? So it's like, no better, do better. And that's the point of this candid conversation today. It's like, okay, cool. Like that was then, this is now. Um, if I didn't have that story, I probably wouldn't feel so empowered to share my own and, and you can see parts of it in yourself. So everything happens as, as it is, just accept it and move on and, and, and no better, do better. So, um, so I ended up accepting this offer just immediately. I was like, yep, cool. Like I'll take the Apple offer and then um, years later, as I'm growing throughout the company, I start now hiring for this role that I started at. Um, and I can see all the behind the scenes of how much this role is worth, right? Like I can see the range. And I saw, it was like, they literally offered me the very lowest end of their offer. And I left at least $20,000 on the table, at least, right? Cause I had two other, two other amazing offers. Um, and, and so it's just, you know, um, I'm like, how do I feel right now in that moment sharing the story? I'm like, yeah, it, it's a bummer. Like I, I wish someone would have told me, right? Like what I'm telling you now, like I wish someone would have been like, hey, like negotiate. Um, a lot of my friends were like, yo, you got enough from Apple. Like you better take that, you know, <laughs> like that's cool. So I think, um, yeah, here we are. And, and I think that's just kind of the, the why. And then we'll get more into, well, what does that actually look like in practice? So Whitney, I would love to hear maybe like the how we go about um, negotiating in the process. Yeah, yeah, I think um, my sort of, I won't dive too far into like what really revs my engine, but uh, 
when I was in college, someone I knew took a semester off and was working um, with a local real estate firm. And I, we were at a party and <clears throat> I remember him saying like, it's so great. You know, we've got this like admin role and women apply and we lowball them and they don't even negotiate. They just take, take what we offer them. And I was like, shit, I'm going to jail tonight. <laughs> like, I hate you. I hate everyone you work with. I don't even know what negotiation is, but I appreciate that he chose to say that to me uh, because it gave me so much fuel for myself um, and for everyone I've ever encountered to negotiate because it was clear uh, that this, this was a thing that I was supposed to do and that people should do. So, you know, we say at work well, we support a lot of, you know, female job seekers um, and ultimately 100% of everyone should negotiate. This does contribute to the wage gap that we see because women tend to, not all of us, right, but tend to not negotiate or historically have not. I saw some stuff, uh, Lorna shares, my Puerto Rican mother told me negotiations disrespectful. Um, so like Lucy was saying, narratives have informed our beliefs around this process. Um, and I think there's definitely like a societal narrative around women being like compliant, generalizing, right? But <laughs> that is a, a true fact. Um, and I think just like my friend sharing that, like he just heard it from the other white dudes in the office, you know, he was just regurgitating an experience that, um, hopefully he hadn't reflected on and found <laughs> good, but also I'll never know. So anyway, what I do know is it really lit me up around negotiating and knowing that other people needed to do it too, um, because it really is part of the process. So I know there's some good questions coming in and I just, I want to look at that to sort of inform the how. Um, Susanna, great question. What do you, and I think this might've been for Shannon, but the recruiter and company think when they just take that first offer, like Lucy said, it can be a red flag, right? And I've heard of other folks, um, and this chaps my ass, I'll be honest, that once people accept the offer and are an employee that the person who extended the offer or was hiring will be like, just so you know, and I'm like, yo, you could have done that in the process. You know what I mean? And there are recruiters who will say like, hey, there, there's a, a, a larger range we are working with here and uh, I'm gonna, it looks like Shannon's on that side of the conversation, which is really cool. Um, and so for, for maybe recruiters or folks who don't feel comfortable doing that or where there might be some tight rules around it company-wide, this is why Workwell exists to, and Techeria and this conversation to just like, I think then we've really drilled it in, negotiations built in the process, right? So starting with that mindset, whatever your experience has been thus far, we get to be a little bit more empowered, a little bit more knowledgeable from today moving forward. And I'll say, you don't have to do this alone. Like be, being community, whether it's Workwell, Tecadilla, you know, what other, other communities are out there to support this conversation? Because like Lucy said, so often it's just helping our clients send that email. Like they know it, they cognitively know it, but there's that fear that offer came in. I don't want to effing job search anymore. Like, I just want to say, yes. What if they retract it? You know, the, those voices pop up. Um, and we're just there like, Hey, remember it's built in the process. Like we got you, we got this. Um, and I think something else, especially for those of us breaking into tech from other industries, um, a lot of our clients have been like, I will be making more than either of my parents have ever made combined or that earning potential or um, gap can, I think I say that to say, this is very psychological and emotional, right? It's like, here are the best practices. You can find those on the internet probably. And you're a whole human navigating this conversation with all of the different things that you got in your mind. So that's why I say community is so, so helpful. Um, okay, let's see. Bup, 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 bup. We'll share more about work well if anyone's interested. I see a couple questions about that. Um, okay, Oscar, this was a cool question because this is super important. Um, knowing knowing one's worth could be difficult. What's a good place to start? Glassdoor. Um, yeah, so there are definitely different resources to to start to um, get a sense of like what your market worth is. 
and I like to say market worth because as a human being, you're invaluable. There's no worth, <laughs> there's no price tag, right? Um, and like you got a set of skills that have a market value that people are going to hire you and depends on the cost, uh, yeah, the cost of living, your target location, et cetera. Obviously, we see a lot of shifts happening because we're moving remote and companies are figuring that out as well. But first things first, if you're not clear on your target role, it would be hard to know your market worth, right? So for those of us sort of navigating this job search, maybe not super clear on the target role, start there um, because that also impacts your whole job search, right? So not just a salary conversation, um, but your resume, your answer to tell me about yourself, your pitch, right? How you answer your interview questions, the different accomplishments and skills that you're gonna highlight from your previous experience. You have tremendous skills and experience already, right? Um, a lot of what we do at Workwell is helping to shape that narrative um, specific to your target role. So we get all the, all the things moving in the same direction. That's a whole other conversation, uh, but it is important if you're trying to figure out, you know, how do I create a range? I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. You gotta be clear on what the target role is. If you've got multiple target roles, uh, my first thing would be try to get more clear on one to do yourself a favor. Otherwise you're gonna be running multiple job searches essentially, right? <clears throat> um, and, and also so you can be really clear on what that range is. Okay, let me just see if any other questions kind of want to inform the next. Um. Also, um, just to uh, Shannon, I want to kind of, I don't know if you have like a list. I know you wanted to have a candid conversation and Winnie and I could literally talk about this yeah, for months. This is what we do. So <laughs> I want to make sure that uh, we leave some space for you as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of questions are coming in about negotiations and salary. And like I said, I think that was like our main topic. Um, that was one, and I wanted to be transparent. Um, I felt like I left a little bit out of my story. So, because I know this is tech idea, like I went from finance, but I moved into tech innovation. So that's where that big jump and increase came from. And I wanted people to know that you can not have like background and experience in tech and still make an increase and a jump, like when you transition um, to completely different, uh, industry or, or, you know, a different um, major, I guess, uh, so to speak. Um, one of the things I did want to talk about before we get into a lot of these questions is really about being authentic in the workplace. Um, I feel like sometimes we go into the workplace and we feel like we just can't, you know, be like our full selves. Like, you know, I'm scared sometimes to wear like braids into work or like wear my, I don't wear hoop earrings like to work, but I wear them outside of work. But if I could, I would definitely wear like my giant hoop earrings, my my long braids and, you know, maybe not the red lipstick all the way, but you know, I might go there, you know, every once in a while um, and still be professional. But I think like, how do we kind of have that like happy medium between like who we are, um, you know, outside of work and then also who we are at work, because I feel like a lot of times we may, we as, um, you know, underrepresented minorities, sometimes we get the feedback that we're closed off, that we're not like really showing like who we are at work. And for me, I'm like, okay, well, how much do I show? You know, do I give them all of Shannon or do I just give them like little bits of Shannon? You know, do I tell them that I love a good happy hour or do I leave that out? Um, <laughs> And I feel like sometimes the people who do get that, um, build those stronger connections at work are those people that kind of let it all out and kind of, you know, tell their story and tell people what's going on with their lives. And, you know, just being honest, I, I find it hard to do that. So I was wondering if you have any advice about being authentic in the workplace, how to kind of like have that happy medium between who you are and then how much you let, how much you let people know at work. Yeah, I love this question. So this is a question that we're constantly in with our clients, just given the population that I mentioned. Um, for example, last year we had someone say he's a black man and he was like, hey, like I just, you know, he signed up for work well and he was like, tell me who I need to be in the interview. Like literally just like tell me who to be and I'll be that person. And I was like, damn, that's so real. Like he literally is like, hey, like I 
going in with the mindset of like, I don't belong here. Just tell me who I have to like show up as like, it's a front just so I can like skate past the interview and then be there. And then I'm like, okay, play the tape forward. Then what happens when you're there? And you were like this person and he's like, oh, that's going to suck because I can't be who I am. Like he's going to have to continue to like be that fake person. And that's awful, you know? So, um, Whitney says this a lot, which I love. It's like when you're interviewing, you know, <laughs> you don't necessarily want to be like your Saturday night self, Shannon. Like you were like, yep, yeah, big hoop earrings, like massive, like red lips, like all that. Like that's cool. And like maybe be your Monday afternoon self and whatever that means for you. I say rock that. Maybe that is the hoop earrings and maybe that is the lipstick for you. Right. And so like honoring that too. Um, I think, you know, this is a big, I mean, this is identity. I mean, humans are always in this question about identity endlessly because what's, what even is that? It's this ever evolving thing. Like as we grow older, our identity grows older. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of complexity with that. So um, as it relates to job searching in particular, um, you know, that Monday afternoon self, and also just to speak to like the times that we're in currently, I, the work work culture is in this very fascinating shift right now we're all feeling it it's like okay we know that <laughs> organization like for example when i worked at apple one of the sayings was like the way to stand out at apple is to fit in and i remember being like there's something about that i don't know exactly what it is right but it just smells funny it's weird and then it was like oh i need to be white to fit in like i need to speak white i need to like um, you know, like I can go into that, but that's like a whole other event. So essentially I'm like, okay, well, like, who do I have to be? And I think for a lot of us in the BIPOC community specifically, it's like, who do I need to be? Like what parts of myself are allowed here to be included? What parts of myself are safe to bring forward? And what parts of myself are, are going to hinder my performance, my, career trajectory and and a lot of this is I mean I can definitely speak from experience this is just added like psychological like mind fuckery if I can swear here it's just like a lot of crap that's like in the back of my mind and it it does it, it does make it difficult to like focus on the work at hand because of all the relational social dynamics of the situation so um, so I just, I say all that to say, like, I really want to empathize with that first and foremost. Um, I think bringing language to something that we feel is important, but um, maybe never really had the words to articulate. And I think a lot of that in today's society is being articulated, right? Like, it's like everywhere. It's, it's like, um, everyone's talking about it. Like, where are all the black and brown people? at all of these executive levels like what are they hiding and then and then people try to you know distract that conversation by like look at oprah and look at nba players and it's like no that's not the conversation we're having right now right and so just i think you know i think like backing this up like just being black or brown and in tech is a big fucking deal right now like i think that's like i think you so a lot of people are like, hey, how do I get involved with DEIB? I'm like, you existing in tech is DEIB. Like you literally just showing up and being like, yeah, this is me. And I don't play whatever. I don't do like beer prong on Fridays with the rest of the team. Like you don't have to do things that you're not comfortable with to fit in. I think that's really important to know. Um, and what I will say is like, well, what do we what's the thing that I need to point towards so I know that I'm moving in a direction that's really aligned with that authenticity. And this is an activity that I do with every single person that I work with ever, because it's like, we need to do a values activity. What is your North Star? Um, for some people, authenticity is like really far down the list and they don't actually care. They're just like, tell me who I need to be. I want to get to the top, like I'll be that person. And what, what ends up happening with those people is they're really exhausted from trying to be someone that they're not and be on all the time. So I will say, like, if that's the path that you're trying to go down, maybe check your intentions. Like, for the sake of what are you trying to get to the top for? Like, why? You know, like, how much is enough? You know, so I think that's a, another good question that I would offer you there. Um, but I would say definitely get in touch with your values. Like, what, do, what am I here to do? Maybe your purpose is like, yeah, I just want to show people that 
Like, I want to be a representative of my culture and my community in this space. And maybe that's your North Star. And like, what does that mean uh, for you? Like, what's a way that you can uh, honor your culture, honor your ancestors, honor um, who you are and, and bring that into the space? And I think creativity is always one of my Norths, right? It's like, I think a lot of the problems in the world, if they're just given some time, attention, focused attention and a lot of creativity, that's how we're going to move through this. So conversations like these where people are inspired by someone's story, right? Or something that someone said really resonates for years to come where they're like, wow, like, yeah, you completely shifted my narrative about how I, you know, I was thinking about this. And so um, I will say like, just being in this conversation is a great first place to be because it's in your awareness. And then um, I would say get comfortable being in the questions, you know, I think a lot of people are looking for answers. Um, and the reality, like, I'll just speak from experience. I'm a coach. I was looking when I first started coaching in my coaching program, I was like asking my instructors for answers all the time. I'm like, what's the answer to this? What's the answer to that? But why is the world like this? And why is it like, just like constantly stressing about how I need to like understand, like it needs to like fit in my perception, you know? And, um, and, and really it's like, be comfortable being in these questions around identity. Like, who do I want to show up as? Who do I want to become? And I would say visualize that person. Like visualization is a really powerful activity. Like, who do I want to show up as? Do I want to show up with dignity in the workplace? And what does that mean for me? And, and is it wearing the hoop earrings? And so I do think that this is a really individual experience for each of you, um, which is honorable. It's like, we want, we don't want cookie cutter anything because even in like the Latinx community or like in the Middle Eastern community, like in any community, it's like no one individual represents the entire community. And it's not fair to put that burden on one individual. So it's like, who am I as an individual and who am I as a representation of the larger whole? And being in those questions is really, that's the work. You know, there's no like magic bullet to this. If I had that, I would be insanely rich, you know, like I don't have the magic bullet to these things because these are life questions. So um, I'll pause there. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Lucy. So Whitney, did you have anything to add only because we have like a little bit of time. I wanted to make sure that we got all of the questions or at least most of them. <laughs> I think that I think that was awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and I will just add like, a, it does depend on like what company you're obviously working with and like what is allowed and things like that. I work for myself so I can wear the hoop earrings, um, <laughs> but <laughs> that took some time. Um, so without further ado, Yaslin, do you want me to um, go ahead and start asking some of these questions or do you want to? Yeah, let's let's move forward. Yeah, you can we can read them and reply verbally. And if someone is like going down the list and want to reply uh, by by text, that's also great. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. You want me to do it? Oh, I can I can do it. Like we replied already for um the worth, right? We talk about the worth, so I'm gonna reply, answer live, and. Hector made a comment. He says, um, cash rules everything around me. Cream. <laughs> what was the cream? Is that like in the tea? <laughs> dollar dollar bill, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for that, for a lot of, that's valid, you know, for a lot of people that's important. And, and yeah. I think yeah, everyone, I, I would say, everyone yeah. considers that important. So we agree, um, Hector. <laughs> um, so the next one someone asked is anyone hiring so i'm just going to put the website to echo me forward because we hire for diverse candidates in tech and innovation all the time and we have i want to say over 20 plus roles available right now so if you are looking for work we're nationwide some remote work some not um so feel free to send your resume or apply through there awesome uh, I was recently grownly hired. Has anyone else experienced this? What's, what was the outcome and how did you cope? 
anyone hiding, that's the answer that anyone hiding is already answered, but the other part. Have you been wrongfully hired or fired? Hired. Um, My answer is no. Short. <laughs> I'm always the right person for the job. <laughs> for sure. I would, yeah. What if I didn't have that mindset? That's called imposter syndrome. So, yeah. That's a good answer. Uh, where did you sign up for the salary negotiation sessions? Cool. Yeah, we can drop an info session link into WorkWell. It's a part of our program that we offer. Um, and here, I'll drop it into the chat. Uh, I think we actually have one coming up um, tomorrow and Friday, so. Awesome, thank you very much, Lucy. How do you make up for money left on the table? Can you do that during the promotion process talks with your manager? I will, I'd love to just offer yeah. some insight here. Yes, there's, you know, opportunity to sort of make up that difference, so to speak, at time of promotion. Most raises average between like one and five percent if you don't negotiate and then you accept an offer to find out that you're making 20k you know less than your counterpart or someone in the same role negotiating that amount i mean it depends on your overall compensation right but the best time to negotiate is that offer you have the most leverage in that part of the conversation um and this is why I want people to avoid because <laughs> it happens, right? Where, um, and I've, we gave a salary negotiation lecture to a women's group at Waymo. Um, and some of the women spoke to how the hiring manager told them it was non-negotiable just to find out that their male counterpart had successfully negotiated. Um, that's not this person's fault, right? They did attempt the negotiation, but that's the stuff I said that, you know, fuels my effing fire <laughs> that really talks more about workplace culture at large like why are people doing that why is this hiring manager doing that and um i think it was alejandra was sharing she's a recruiter and she always gives the top of the band to the the women candidates and so there are people who are absolutely making an impact and doing positive work in that way and then there are some that are not <laughs> we can't control for that um, but what we can do is negotiate to the best of our ability at the front end of the process because that's where there's going to be the most space and most leverage. Um, but Shannon or anyone else have other thoughts on that? Um, I got it. <laughs> yep, I don't. <laughs> Another question is from Gabriela. Uh, she says it is common practice to renegotiate salary. If yes, how long is good to wait? Can you? I will that? say uh, what I've done hiring, and if someone like negotiates within like their first three months, it's annoying. It's like you literally are still onboarding right now. You know, yeah. it's like stop. And so. Um, so yeah, I think just like the reality is like, I'll give you, I negotiated when I left Apple into a startup and, um, and that literally was the startup's boundary. It was like, what they offered me was what they had. And I was like, okay, like, cool, I'll take it. Like it. Um, and then I, in my negotiation, even though you can negotiate for more than just money, FYI, right? Like there's so much more that you can negotiate, like paid time off stocks, things like that. I negotiated a, um, a yearly uh, review, but moved up. So within six months, I was going to like drive as hard as I could for six months. And then we would retalk about the conversation and then the money that I had initially asked for to get up to that point, as long as the expectations are set in the beginning. Great question. Awesome. Thank you very much. I can go with another question from the audience. Uh, what are your thoughts on sign on bonuses? What about sign on bonuses? When is, when is, when should we negotiate for them? Winnie has a lot to say about this. <laughs> I have a lot of feelings about sign-on bonuses. Here's what, I don't like them. And not, not in a way that's like, <laughs> it's like Whitney, you're crazy, it's money, right? I get that and that's valuable. The sign-on bonus is a one-time deal. It often comes with contingencies, like you need to stay a certain amount of time or you have to pay it back in, in full, but you got taxed 40% on it because it was a bonus. Um, 
And at time of promotion or raise potential, you get a percentage of your base salary. That bonus doesn't count. So if you complete your negotiation, you ask for a higher base and to get you to like the total comp package you're looking for, they do a sign on bonus to get you there. I'm not mad about that, <laughs> but I would rather you have a higher base Thanks. because that's what's going to pay your bills month over month. Right. And there's no contingency there besides the fact that you need to work. <laughs> um, and a year down the road when you're getting that promotion raise conversation, the percentage increases on that base, not on the, the bonus is not included. Those are my feelings. So they're not bad. You can include them in the conversation, but our goal is for you to put emphasis on that base salary. Mm -hmm. um, I, I saw a question in the chat, unless Shannon, please. Um, I just, I, I do negotiate, I do negotiate for a sign on bonus when it's before, like if I'm at another job and it's before I would have received my, um, my annual, like my annual bonus or my increase or something. So I try to negotiate, um, so that they know I'm leaving money on the table when I'm leaving another company. That's normally when I always negotiate for a sign on bonus when I'm leaving that. Cool. So I see two questions that I want to. Um, just go in and one of them is uh, Margie Fernandez. So how does one negotiate in these uncertain times when it's an employer's market? Um, just to reiterate the beginning of how we like, I just want to double click on this. Negotiation is an expected part of the process. So it doesn't matter the times. The times are irrelevant. It's expected. So the narrative is, oh my God, it's uncertain times. I can't negotiate because of that. That's a story that people, you know, that anyone can tell themselves because it's a delicate time and it's like, I need to get a job and that's real, right? So, um, and just know that it's expected. There's a way that you ask and what that could sound like is, you know, hey, recruiter, um, you know, when they give you the offer, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate this offer. Um, you know, considering like use your street cred, like my years of experience in this and that um, I'd love to, or I'd like to uh, ask for, you know, between X and Y, give a range between X and Y. And I'm open to understanding what the team has to offer. So it's not like a negotiator bus, give me what I want or bus. Like, no, you're just saying, Hey, okay, you gave me an offer. I'm going to counter offer. And if you can, or you can't great, but I made the offer and I left it open. So I'm not, you know, a punk um, because maybe they don't have it. Maybe they're super scrappy and they don't. The reality is a lot of companies, these like mid-sized large tech companies do. On average, our clients negotiate a median of $11,000. So that's how much money they, and just base salary. So that's how much money they're leaving on the table in just base. So no, if you want a number to stick to, it's always safe. Um, we have our clients negotiate between 15 to 20% because what's the worst thing that could happen? They could say no. <laughs> and so why not aim on the high end of that range? A lot of people negotiate, uh, play it safe in the like five to 10%. We say go big 15 to 20% because it's so much easier to negotiate when you're coming into a company as opposed to when you're already in. And then, you know, it's just, it's a different situation. Kind of like what Shannon said, you know, when you jump in, you have, there's more space to do that. Um, and then this, this question is super important. I wanna make sure we don't skip over this. This was from an anonymous attendee, um, but it is relevant to this particular space, which is immigrant culture often teaches you to be satisfied with what you get and to prove your worth by working very hard. Can this method work for an office setting? I love this question. Um, and I will be mindful, again, I'm so passionate about this, could talk to you forever about it, but to really consolidate it is Yes, I'm a, you know, the child of immigrants, first generation. Um, and it, yes, it's like, get what you want, be happy, be grateful. And know your worth, you know, I think that's a, a you don't have to prove your worth. I think that's important to know, like, that's a narrative. It's a narrative that immigrants have to like prove themselves to then get or become or move up that we have to like work harder. And I'm not saying that's not real. Like that's a real experience for a lot of us. Yeah, we have to learn how to speak differently. We have to learn different social dynamics and what's appropriate and what's not in different contexts, right? Um, and, and, you know, you don't have to prove it. You can still negotiate in every step of the process um, and make sure that you're practicing this out loud, right? Like don't wait to ask your boss for the first time 
and say it out loud, like practice with each other, like actually bring language to it. And then your body catches up and it's cool about it. like Whitney and I, everyone's like, how do you guys know so much? It's literally because we do this all the time. Like when we started this, I like was crying to Whitney about how I never wanted to teach salary negotiation. Literally, I was like, no, I'm not doing that. Like, I don't, you know, and now I'm like, I talked to you for months, right? And it's just because you practice, it's a skill that can be learned. So you being in this conversation is you refining that skill to have the awareness of what direction do I even move in? What do I do next? Thank you very much. Those are great answers, very insightful. Uh, would you like to continue, Sandra, or want me to take it? No. Shall I take it? Yeah? No? Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, okay, so another question that came here from an anonymous attendee. Do you have any recruiters that you would recommend? Me. I do. <laughs> myself here <laughs> we're all recruiters <laughs> we cannot refer friends to positions right and and help them and Shannon is a recruiter and yeah. we can recommend her and I, and I know Lucy and Whitney are also experts in recruiting so we can recommend them as well right I will say I'm very transparent um, when it comes to job opportunities like I will give it to you very like cut and dry <laughs> If you tell, you know, if you're asking about a particular role, I say, this is the range, you know, I'm very transparent about the salary range, what type of workplace culture it is, like what you're going to get yourself into, what type of work, um, what the team looks like, if that's something that you're comfortable with, because I've been in situations where I've uh, taken an offer and been with a team that I was like, I, I didn't even know that this was a team dynamic, even though I asked about it, sometimes you get sold on this promise that you're going into this company that's going to be amazing and um, everything's going to be rainbows and sprinkles and it's just not that way. Um, so when I became a recruiter, I wanted to make sure that I was transparent and, you know, I do that for everyone. That's awesome. Thank you, Shannon. Okay, let me do one more question from the audience. It is illegal for, for employers to resent an offer to stop the offer because you decide to negotiate. Um, I'm going to be yeah, honest. I will say you could still rescind it. Yeah. For other reasons. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Like this person got yes, on my nerves. Technically. Yes. It's like, it's like at least, like, yeah, exactly. Like you can rescind Like if you push, reason. you know, I want a more, you know, higher salary and you already got the job offer and you're doing the negotiation, right. the organization, and you keep pushing for a higher salary, you yeah. think that there's a chance they might be like, okay, actually. If it's annoying. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's, a, the, there's that, I guess, fear, you know, that's why people don't, of course. some people might not keep uh, negotiating. Yeah. So it's like, like most of what we say, it's voice tone intentionality, right? So it's like, if I'm like, give me this money or like, I'm going to your competitor. It's like, bye. Like, you know, like go to the competitor. Yeah. Like that's like that energy that I want in my team. Um, or if it's, yeah. But if it's like, Hey, like, thank you for the offer. I'm looking for a range in between X and Y. I gave you all these reasons um, that are valid. Um, and I'm open to understanding what the team has to offer and like literally leave it at that. Right. And then it's like, or it could be like, and if you're open to this, I'm willing to drop all my other interview processes and sign now. Good. Cool, right? So it's like, like yes. Assertive. And, yeah. Being assertive more than anything. Well, yes. Be assertive, absolutely. And yeah. also, um, uh, I think there's sirens, so excuse that. But assertive and just like, how would you want to be received? Like, it, be open and curious. I think curiosity is really important with negotiation because mm -hmm. it's like, hey, is there anything left on the table? Cool. If there's not, okay. Thanks. Right. I'm glad we had this conversation. Right. I, I feel like always make sure you're negotiating, but you're still keeping that like likability factor while you're negotiating. So it's almost like, you know, you know, can, can you ask for, you know, can I get an extra 10 or, you know, however you want to, you know, ask or negotiate and make sure you're not being too pushy or over like car salesman-y and to the point where somebody is a little bit turned off by what you're asking for. Yeah. And in that sense, I think this question is pretty good, is, you know, pretty relevant. It comes from Juliet Ramirez. 
Uh, you ladies mentioned never ta taking the first offer. When do you know when it is the time to accept or decline? I Wait, do you want to take this one? Or, or go for it, yeah, and I, I think like, like we kind of said in the question prior, it's that point where you're reaching like this tension and you're having like those conversations and then all of a sudden you might hear in their tone that they're getting a little bit frustrated or, or they might be like withdrawing or feeling some type of way like they're not um, as receptive to what you're asking for, then you know it's like, okay, drop it. Like there's, you hear it in their voice, you can feel it in the tone that that person is not, you know, trying to budge anymore. And there, there's also opportunities where, you know, as startups where that's it, they don't have any wiggle room, like what they're offering from a salary or base salary perspective is what they're offering. And that's kind of one of those other situations where you shouldn't um, push the needle. Whitney. That's great. Thank you very much. And um, when a recruiter asks me what, a sal what salary I am looking for, I ask what is in the budget range. Is that okay? Is that an okay answer? I don't, I wouldn't phrase it that way. Um, I would say, I would rephrase it and say, you know, what, what's the market what's the market range for this particular role um, as opposed to like what's in your budget that's like asking somebody like what's in your pocket like what are you going to pay me for this role instead I would say like you know what's like what's a good market um, a market rate for this particular position that's how you know I used to do when I negotiated and they would um, normally give me a range but you should always already have your range prepared I'm going to be honest like what they're doing in terms of like market research is the same thing that you could be doing in terms of market research for the role as well. Love that. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And this, this is another question for an attendee. It's related to the topic. Like how do you negotiate when you do not have uh, other offers, but outside resources like uh, F like Glassdoor or any other of those or friends let, uh, let you know that there is more on the table? Well, negotiation is an expected part of the process. So even if you don't have any other offers, negotiate anyway and just ask for more. And it, you don't have to say like, I'm gonna drop all my other interview interviews, period. Um, you could say I'm dropping my other interview processes. Like you can be actively applying and stop that. Like I would say, just be truthful, like in every step of the way, that's, Go for honesty, go for what's real. And then the energy, like what Shannon was talking about, is um, a lot more authentic, right? Like people can feel, especially when you're in the pressure cooker of an interview or negotiation, if your intentions are off, like, or if it's like slimy or weird, like people are gonna really feel that, you know? So um, get clear, do your research beforehand. And, and even if it is your one offer, it's expected, negotiate anyway. Great question. Thank you guys. And I just want to be mindful of time. We have two minutes. If you guys want to answer another quick question or give general tips about what we have been talking about, that's great. I just want to reiterate. Thank you very much, Lucy and Whitney for being here. You guys are awesome. We're so thankful with Jen as well and with Sandra for being here, for facilitating this event, for making it possible. Thank you all the participants for attending. We hope we, you guys learn as much as I did. I mean, and I learned I a lot. I know <laughs> you guys are like way ahead and, uh, and you enjoy it and you got some drinks uh, for some at 3 p.m., for some other ones around 6 p.m., but you know, relax. And Cheers. thank you very much. Thank you. It's Hello. happy hour somewhere, I always say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this event was, uh, hosted by Tequeria. So if you guys want to learn more about the organization, feel free to uh, check out tequeria.org and also Whitney and Lucy's company work well. They have a lot of resources there. I was one of her students. I can vouch for their excellence and I got a job. So I'm not saying that, you know, you, you take it, you do your work, you get your job. <laughs> so They're you offering a promo code Tequeria half off. I just provided the, the, the um, coupon in the, the website. Nice. Yeah, we have um, an event Thursday. Lucy will be sharing about how to storytell for interviews. 
Um, so you can use that code uh, on Eventbrite for half off. Um, we have another event next Thursday. So join us um, and, you know, I put the link for our LinkedIn's. Please add us. We love to be connected. Um, join an info session if you're interested in the full accelerator. Um, and it was such a pleasure to be here with you all. Um, yeah, and shout out to Tech Korea. Seriously, I just line. to honor this community. Um, Yaslin, first of all, like you're such a leader. Like, thank you for showing up in this way for the community to empower the community. Um, Shannon, you're gonna kill it on the East Coast with Techeria. It's freaking amazing. So super happy that it's taken off over there um, and that we get to be a part of empowering the community to learn and develop and grow and um, continue to flourish in their careers. So um, Sandra, thank you for hosting. And we're just so grateful to be a part of this any way that we can continue to support. Definitely feel free to reach out, okay? Thank you so much. Thank All right. We should picture. Oh, picture. Big picture. Yeah, the ones that are here. Wait, Somebody wait, raise your so. hand, by the way. Uh, How can we do a screenshot? Uh, yeah, we'll have shift to. three. Nice so man. ready? One, okay. two, three. <laughs> Let me take another one. Okay. Um, but I'll move the, the chat bubble. All right. Okay. One, two, three. Cool. Got it. I'll send it in a follow up. All uh, right. Take care, everyone. Take Thank care, you. everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.